Greetings to you all, Cherry's viewers, lovely people, lovers of aviation history, aviation enthusiasts. Welcome to today's video, which is the same pilot career progression 030 coming to you from the studios of Aviation Maestro Multimedia. Okay, in our previous video, we uh, went through the headers, if I should say, or the formalities after obtaining your commercial pilot license, instrument rating, and multi engine. Fresh from flying school, what do you do? So if you remember, we spoke about the interview, we spoke about the Master Pilot Program A, indoctrination. Master Pilot Program B, that's the multi-crew co uh, cooperation program, which is uh, people also call it the jet transition. It's fine. Okay? Then uh, we went through what you call the type rating course. Now the, um, this guy for, or this lady from flying school is now type rating on uh, the aircraft that the airline desires him or her to fly. They went through the phases. Okay. So before we continue with today's lesson, do remember uh, we are here with another banger. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We're coming to you with exciting stuff. Okay. So career progression for the airline pilots 030 today. This video objectives. Are there any objectives? Yes, there are and um, we are still appreciating the progression the pilot is not done yet i said it in previous videos as soon as you enter this profession it's just a series of headers so you remember you started with the medical exam that you had to do right from day one then choosing a school and um, we went through uh, the things that's in the ground school the flight uh, sessions of the commercial pilot the instrument rating and multi-engine stuff we went through a whole lot of things after flying school what you have to do today we are still appreciating the steps the progression because it's not just you know one you know knee jerk approach or one leap then you are a captain no there are so many stages you have to follow so we are going to appreciate that so what i'll do is we'll go through the line check or the line training what is line training we'll go through what you call a line check then we today we're going to look at how do you progress from a second officer to a first officer how do you progress from a first officer to a senior first officer how do you progress from a senior first officer for command upgrade now this uh, all these progressions like i said each airline's operations manual will have different things to say but I, i'm going to take you through the ideal okay so let's start off with line training your guy or the guys are out of type rating they are so excited ready to start flying are you okay but uh, because of their experience level are you okay every airline has a policy where that co-pilot so now the person is uh in fact let me start from my time in order for you to appreciate the steps in my time we started with what we call the bob no rank what is bob no rank bob no rank is you get out of flying school and your chief pilot still says okay legally you have the license from flying school and your type you see whenever you you, you, you pass a type rating it is attached to your license that you had from flying school okay they will say we, that aircraft that you successfully checked out of is attached to your license so legally you can fly but the chief pilot is going to say from my lens you are still not a pilot you know this i'm just talking about what we went through are you okay well what we went through i'm not saying it should be but I just want to take you from what we went through because how we went through the steps, right? From foundation to linter. We went through every step you can imagine. Some companies skip a little bit of it in terms of their ranking system yeah, and everything. But we went through the Bob No Rank. Bob No Rank means that they are telling you that, okay, you know something? You, we haven't seen you fly this particular aircraft with passengers behind you. So you are not going to have anything on your shoulder. That's your shoulder, your epaulets or anything on your, your jacket ring. We used to call it the Bob No Rank. Are you okay so what happens is that we had to go through and it's also happening in some airlines what we call line training the line training is just a series of flights where you are going to do it with your training captain i'll get to that one in the other videos your training captain is somebody who a captain who has more experience and has um, what you call the authorization from the civil aviation to provide training to uh, first officers or brand new captains so if he's training a brand new captain he, the training captain, sits in the right seat and the new captain sits in the left for a couple of flights, okay? If he's training a, a co-pilot, obviously he sits in the left and uh, the co-pilot is in the right. And uh, with your first maybe five lessons 
okay it is going to be the configuration of line training is that each flight the training captain is on the left the brand new co-pilot from type ratings on the right then we have a next another co-pilot who is experienced at least who has about 500 to 1000 hours on that particular aircraft who will be in what you call the jump seat the idea is that the captain is so overloaded flying and monitoring a lot of things whilst he's also diverting some of his attention to training you the inexperienced because trust me your first two days in that uh, seat you are just a passenger everything is just going to go past you the aircraft is going to fly past you everything in terms of speed you can never overcome it unless you go to about three sessions so there may be some checklists that you may not be doing early because you yourself you are just overwhelmed it's natural it's learning no matter your skills and everything you can buy experience in one day so the idea is to put an extra co-pilot with the experience in the jump seat so that if you skip a checklist or a procedure he can intervene and if somewhere along the line for example adverse weather around the uh, wherever you'll be flying to that day or something which is a little bit abnormal what happens is that the training captain says, okay you know what um the the experienced uh, co-pilot should re uh, replace the new guy let the new guy go back into the jump seat because whenever you are learning to fly this aircraft and the environment is not as normal as it should be trust me you don't learn anything over there you don't learn anything you are just a passenger just blinking you are just like a newborn baby just just blinking everywhere looking everywhere and smiling that's all you are but you are supposed to be flying people behind you so what happens is that the training captain recommend that you and the uh, that's under adverse way. so we have what that guy is called or the lady is called a safety pilot just has a little bit more experience than you the co-pilot and you can back his the idea is to back the captain up during your training trust me you go into you fly into certain environments is it may even take you 40 hours to even understand what the other controllers are saying because of tonation and other things and you know it takes time for you really to acclimatize in that seat it's just a matter of you can't buy experience so that's the role of the safety pilot. so that's the configuration some airlines have 40 flights some airlines have 200 flights some of them you I mean have what you call 10 flights it all depends on the fo's experience meaning that you fly this number of flights with your training captain somewhere along the line when you are about 10 percent into the training the training captain thinks that you are making progress on a day-to-day -day basis what he will do is that he will release the safety pilot from the cockpit and he will that safety pilot will not be part of the continued line training anymore that's when he the training captain feels that yes you are acclimatizing we have what you call normal progress that means on the first flight certain things that you should accomplish the second flight certain things you can if you are accomplishing it that way according to the same we say it's normal progress because that's how you should progress are you okay if you need more time where you are still trying to grip yourself i mean get yourself around to what's happening are you okay the safety pilot will stay there a bit longer are you okay but and so you are very comfortable with the aircraft the safety pilot to be there let's say we have released the safety pilot it's 40 flights and within five or six flights you've released the safety pilot now it's you and the training captain and um, you are still building your confidence on, uh, on the aircraft in terms of handling dealing with radio work and other things because we have a lot of paperwork we have to uh, deal with all this will be talked in the uh, master pilot program company paperwork and everything okay so well, as you get comfortable comfortable and you are getting to let's say the four uh, maybe 20 flights out of the 40 flights companies will always recommend that we will change the training captain so that um, the other training captain will come and continue from the 21st flight all the way to the 38th flight sort of are you okay because the whole idea about flying is that what i may see as x another training captain of my same listen will also see it as y so but if the two of us are saying the same thing about the learner or about the trainee then it, it, uh, the, the, that will be taken to be the gospel so normally when you are about halfway into your line training which may be in some companies is 40 prescribed flights are you okay in some of the flights you'll be doing the flying duties in some of them you'll be doing the non-flying duties okay and um, if the training captain is comfortable with you what happens is that um, in the 20th flight they'll change the next training captain let him also come and see some consistency in terms of your progress building let's say you get to the 38th flight and he's very comfortable with you what you do is that he or she will recommend you for what we call a check ride we call that check ride line check anything that you hear line 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 in our industry is just that you are flying passengers there's because we have what you call the simulator we have what you call the line line simply means the actual flying of passengers okay so in the 30th session if the training captain is comfortable with you uh, what he will just do is he will put you up for it we have to sign you up it's a legal process 
It's not something by word of mouth and say, oh, oh, it's okay, it's fine, oh, it's fine. No, no, we don't do this in aviation. There's nothing like that in at least a decent airline or an airline with decent flight operation management control systems. We don't do this. What happens is that if the training captain has taken you from 21st flight to, let's say, the 38th flight and he's comfortable with you, what you do is that he's a paperwork for him to recommend you for a check ride. And that means he's not the one supposed to do that flight exam. So the check ride configuration is different. What happens is that they'll say, okay, well, he's a little bit comfortable handling the aircraft. So what we're going to do is that we are going to put a captain in the left seat who is not a training captain. Are you okay? Because the whole idea is for you to pass a check ride and fly with people who are not trainers. So he'll put another captain in the left seat, okay, with you in the right seat, and another examiner. So that means technically, in some companies where we are short of examiners, maybe the first guy who took you to the, I mean, who took you through the first 20 flights could be the one who uh, will be your check, uh, what do you call your, your examiner or your check captain. Are you okay? So the configuration of a line check is an experienced captain, yes, but not yet a trainer, with you in the right seat and a check captain in the jump seat now. So right now you are not flying out. We just want to see how you operate with another captain. Are you okay? And the check captain is just looking at how you are following procedures and whether you are meeting or end or exceeding the standards and everything. So that's the configuration of line check. People call it check right. Check right is the same thing. Are you okay? So captain here, what you call a line captain here, but not yet an instructor. Uh, the um, FO, that's the uh, first officer. Then another captain in the jump seat. This one, not a safety pilot, but a captain in the jump seat. He's not playing safety pilot roles. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's supposed to just be a passenger. He's not supposed to say anything. For that day, he's just supposed to look at the two of you and see how you can operate. All things being equal, when you pass that check ride, because he's going to look at one flight that you did whilst handling. He's also going to look at one flight that you did whilst not handling. Whether you the two duties you are doing in consistency with the flight operations manual or the standard operation procedures. If it's successful, then, like in our time, then you can, uh, you'll be promoted, you know, or you'll be officially designated as a second officer. And when you look on the screen, you see one epaulet on the shoulder and uh, one uh, ring epaulet on the jacket. That's when you are official. In our time, like I said, we started with Bob, no rank, because we hadn't finished our line check. So we were, but some companies differently. Okay, even though the word second, we went one stripe. Even though you hear the number two and there's one on your shoulder. That's how it is. Almost like the military system where we have warrant officer class two and warrant officer class one. The warrant officer class one is higher than the warrant officer class two. Don't ask me why. Okay, so with the, the passing of the line check, you are now an officially designated second officer with one stripe on your jacket coat and one uh, epaulet on your shoulder. Second officer. All right. We're, we're moving from second officer to first officer depends on the company you are in. Some companies are operating procedures will say, okay, we've now checked him out. You know, and once you are checked out every six months, you are supposed to go back into the simulator for a day or two to sort of, you let's put it, refresh yourself and examine yourself. It's almost a sharpening of skills thing. So the first day is just for training and practice. The next day is check right. They give you, they simulate the same things that happen in the airline. That's how you, uh, you'll be introduced to simulator in the first place. It's a replica of what happens in the airline. The feelings, the design of the simulator, as you see on the screen, the design of the simulator um, is on what you call hydraulic struts. Are you okay? So it makes you feel banking, the pitch, the descent, everything that I mean happens on the aircraft is replicated there. Are you okay? So some companies, okay, you're a second officer. If you go for your first, your six months, what we call the operations proficiency check, are you okay? You are successful. Um, we'll look at next six months. That's now, you are now one year on the aircraft. Are you okay? If you're one year on the aircraft and you go for your proficiency check, they have a technical record which will be building up. Are you okay? It's okay, fine. You've got two simulators. Then one after, the, uh, that's 18 months after you've checked out on that aircraft. If that simulator is successful and they need, it also depends on the company's need. The company doesn't need you in a certain position. They will not advertise for it. So you'll be where you are. So if they need more, if I say first officers, then that means three successful simulators after your first checkout in this, on, 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 on that aircraft, they would now, if I say, um, 
go through what you call a flight proficiency exam and you'll be promoted to first officer now listen first officer even though the number is one you now have two stripes on your jacket first officer two stripes on the jacket as you see on the screen are you okay and um, from first officer to senior first officer it also varies from companies to companies okay because senior first officer just simply means you are a captain in waiting so you need more experience yes then um, when you are uh, when you clock a certain amount of hours because we have a logbook which i'll be uh, explaining to you in future videos the logbook and how we log the hours and everything how do we get it stamped by the chief pilot how do we get it stamped by the uh, director of flight operations and things like that so when you've made a certain amount of hours depending on your countries the airline you are in and the country's civil aviation procedures whenever you've met a certain amount of hours both in night flying day flying instrument flying and so many other things then you write what we call the atpl remember you did ppl then you graduated in flying school with cpl you as a co-pilot you're having your commercial pilot license privileges are you okay but uh, uh, for you to uh, progress from first officer that's two stripes to senior first officer that's three stripes or you can call it the captain in waiting or the captain in the departure launch all you have to do is uh, like we said accomplish those hours that are stipulated by the country civil aviation and uh, your next simulator check ride in fact you do what we call the airline transport pilot license atpl okay do the atpl which is just an advanced information of your commercial pilot license so you will depart out of flying a bit go into a ground school for about here to every country has his policy a month or so just studying the advanced things of what you studied in flying school are you okay not aircraft specific per se but those same things you learned like aviation medicine aviation law navigation flight instruments metrology etc etc you now going for the advanced uh, if i say portion of that information if you pass the ground school exams uh, then your next you come back online your next simulator course your next simulator course could be treated like a check ride and the check ride is to promote you from first officer to senior first officer that's now you have three stripes after you've passed that check ride okay so you see the progression you come from your simulator you have a line check you pass i mean line training 40 flights i'm just using the basic one 40 flights and if you are successful you go to a line check after a line check you, that means you and another captain who is not a training captain can be flying. Then if I say three successful simulators after a line check or 18 months after your line check, if they need what you call first officers, you'll be promoted. That means that flight on the, or that simulator session at 18 months would be treated as a check ride to promote you to what we call the first officer. Remember, a first officer, you are still in the right seat, still behaving like any other first officer, but the experience which is required of you and the standards that you're supposed to make should be getting better as and when you put those rings on your coat. Are you okay? Then, like I said, from first officer, you have to build a certain amount of hours as stipulated by your country's civil aviation. Then you depart from flying a bit and go into the ground school to um, do about almost a month of theory. Let's put it this way. Basic theory. This one is not only the aircraft alone you are studying, but you are studying other things you learned in flying school to the advanced or the last degree. Are you okay when you are successful with that then any simulator you do after that that's any simulator checks that you do remember i told you we go for proficiency checks every six months so any simulator checks that you do um that will be treated as your senior first officer check right if you are successful and complete all the necessary paperwork with the civil aviation because with this one the civil aviation is, is more involved okay so when you are uh, you are done with all the paperwork with the civil aviation then you wear three stripes on your coat or three epaulets on your shoulders are you okay and you are now what you call a senior first officer senior first officer just means basically you are a captain in waiting are you okay so anytime that the company needs to train a captain you will be one of the first people to be considered in the companies we have what we call queues so it all sometimes depends you can go for your senior first officer uh, check ride have your three co i mean three bars and you could be waiting and waiting sometimes four years sometimes five years not because you've done anything wrong it's just simply does the company need captains if yes you'll be and they have to consider you sometimes you will be like maybe 60 people who have the three bars on the coat and the company needs about eight captains so remember the queue will just be going 
the first eight, then now you are repositioned, etc. It all depends on the company's needs for the captain. It all depends on uh, it all depends on um, how many people are in the queue. It also depends on your position in the queue. It all depends on so many things. So it's, these things I've mentioned are not automatic. Even from first officer to senior first officer, the company can say, uh, 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 this guy, yes, when it comes to skill flying and everything, his procedures and everything is okay, but uh, we have a little bit of, uh, you know, question marks here and there about his personality. Because now that you are going to be the captain, you are now going to be a bigger face of the airline. When you are being interviewed um, uh, after flying school, you just, just you wanted to see whether you could be the face of the airline. But for you to be a captain where right now we are putting the whole aircraft, you know, people's lives, both in their cabin and those on ground into your hands, trust me, they want to see a very great personality and HR have a way of doing it. So as you are living through all these ranks I've mentioned, as you are going through all these ranks I've mentioned, what happens is that people are observing you from different angles. Every year you go for an appraisal and everything. So obviously your progress is recorded both on the technical side with your department and also on the HR side. And in so many departments, people are just viewing you. How you conduct yourself, how you deal with emergencies, how you deal with provocations. They have ways that they're able to assess you and say, okay, you know what? This guy is really the command material. Are you okay? So what happens is that whenever they will need commanders, these are some of the questions they ask themselves. Is this guy okay? Okay, let's look at his technical record. Let's look at his last three simulator records. Oh, how was it like? Okay, he met the criteria, everything. But what do you think about, I'm just using a different name, Yao Menu. What do you think about Yao Menu? Do you think he's okay? His temperament, I don't think, you know, how is his people relations, you know, natural. You want to see your natural self because some of these things, we don't have to tell you that we are examining you to go and, you know, see what your people relation is like. No, you just observe you on the normal days and abnormal days, how you react and everything. So let's say you pass all the criteria by, there's always going to be a board, you know, command upgrade selection board which is made up of the chief pilot, made up of the director of flight operations, and your aircraft fleet that you fly. You have what we call a fleet manager. Are you okay? So all these people come together and say, okay, you know what? Plus HR, everything. Oh, yes. In terms of technical record, operational record, everything is cool. Um, his personality is fine. You know, things like that. I think he's somebody who can take responsibility. You know, he has the initiative. You know, these are things they normally look at, initiatives and everything. I think he has all of that. Let's uh, give, give, give him a chance. Are you okay? So what normally happens is that you go into a, uh, back into the type rating training organization and uh, you do a bit of ground school on the aircraft. Same thing, you are just advancing yourself. I mean, more information. You do more of co uh, command training. There's a syllabus for that too. Uh, transitioning you from the uh, right seat to the left seat. That has a set of training. That's a classroom bit and uh, uh, flying bit. Are you okay? You want to do, you'll be doing more of management programs and stuff like that because as a captain, you are actually a, di a director or you're even a manager. Are you okay? Now, how do you manage people? How do you manage resources? How do you manage, um, you know, your character itself, your personality? Are you okay? So, um, you go for, let's say, a command upgrade course. That's when you, if you are recommended, you go through a command upgrade course. And uh, if you are successful, you have to come back and do what you call line check or line training, but this time, line training in the left seat. Remember, you've been flying the right seat all along, and now you have to do the line training in the left seat. Are you okay? And uh, in my subsequent videos, I will now go delve into the command training properly. I will tell you more about what the line check looks like, or sorry, what the line training looks like, what the line check looks like. I will tell you more about it. So basically, we want to see, have we really met our objectives for the day? Yes, I think we have. We are still appreciating the career progression and we started right from the time that you said you wanted to be a pilot and i'm sure you've seen the series of hurdles that we clear then we looked at things like um, the line training for a brand new first officer and the ranking system i think we've learned something today i've really enjoyed you asking when we explain these things keep the questions coming and you know continue to comment keep them coming don't forget to like share subscribe hit the notification button and I want to say thank you from the studios of the Aviation Maestro Multimedia.